infectious mononucleosis. The mononucleosis is a viral infection that is spread through saliva. The infected person passes the virus to other individuals, mostly by kissing. It is a self-limiting viral infection that affects mostly adolescents and young adults. The mononucleosis is caused by a herpes virus, a bistine bar virus. Mono means a lot of lymphocytes in the blood, and some of these lymphocytes will be atypical. The Epstein-Barr virus enters the mouth through the infected saliva and infects the epithelial cells in the pharynx. Then it infects the B cells in the tonsils, which causes pharyngitis. Then it goes through the lymphatic tissue in the body. The classic triad is fever, sore throat, pharyngitis, lymphadenopathy, enlarged glands, especially the neck lymph nodes. The patient may also have fatigue and splenomegaly in about 50% of the patients. Splenomegaly is an important clinical finding. Unfortunately, the splenomegaly is palpable in only 50% of the time. The patient has an enlarged spleen which it looks like an inflated balloon. The inflated spleen is most likely to burst, and this rupture of the spleen most commonly occurs in the first three weeks. Splenic rupture has not been reported after the individual being ill for more than three weeks. Measuring the spleen by ultrasound or by examination is controversial. Most clinicians will recommend a return to contact sports after four weeks from the onset of symptoms. Some of the diagnosis is there will be increased lymphocytes in the blood and the presence of heterophil antibody, they call it the monospot test, which is a quick test. It is produced by the abnormal B cells infected by the virus. There will be absolute and relative increase in lymphocytes. The patient will have atypical lymphocytes. The normal lymphocytes will have a small nucleus and little cytoplasm. The atypical lymphocytes will have a large nucleus and a lot of cytoplasm. It is reactive cytotoxic T cells trying to kill the infected B cells. The risk of a spontaneous splenic rupture is highest in the first three weeks after the onset of symptoms. The return to play is based on the physical examination and the imaging studies, but also on the risk of splenic rupture. The clinical evidence supports the return to all sports activities four weeks after the onset of symptoms, provided that the spleen has returned to a normal size. If the patient presented one week after the onset of symptoms, he can return to play in three weeks from the time he was examined. And if the patient presented two weeks after the onset of symptoms, they can return to play two weeks from the time the patient was examined. The athlete should be afebrile, well hydrated, and asymptomatic. Athletes with infectious mononucleosis should avoid all physical activity for a period of three to four weeks after onset and should not return to competition for three weeks after their symptoms resolve.
The treatment is rest, fluids, and nutrition. Accidentally, the tonsillitis may be treated by antibiotics because it looks like a bacterial infection or a sore throat. And the antibiotic that's usually given is ampicillin or amoxicillin. And when it is prescribed for the Epstein-Barr virus, it can cause a rash in the body. And this rash will disappear when we stop the antibiotics. So the patient will break out in a rash, and it's called amoxicillin rash. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.